This is a presentation about a UFO demonstration made several decades ago that show us the extraordinary technological capabilities of the Pleiarian technology. The Pleiarian are a group of extraterrestrial human beings that had been in contact with Billy Mayer for several years. If you are not familiar with Billy Mayer's case, I suggest that you watch the great documentary the Silent Revolution of Truth. It was produced by Michael Horn. Recently, the US Navy has recognized that UFOs are real, as in the US, other countries do not know who is behind a technology that does not seem to be from us, not from Air Humans technology. It is clear they can make maneuvers that demonstrate they master new laws of gravitation, not yet understood by us. I mean altering space and time, creating anti-gravitational fields, and isolating their space interior. For example, by displaying huge acceleration that would kill a human being inside a ship. As Mayer said, this spaceship behaved like a little planet with their own gravitational field, isolated from external ones. Decades ago, the Pleiadian extraterrestrial space beings conducted a pre-planned demonstration, showing us that their ships can jump a fraction of a second from one place to another. According to Einstein, nobody can travel faster than the speed of light. Well, they show us that we do not need to travel because they, eventually we, can jump in the space-time. The Pleiadian also show us they can create a hologram or a 3D projection of a tree located in another place. And maybe by showing us a tree from the future in this video, they are telling us they can see or travel in time. Can they predict or see how a tree would be in the future? This is the video recorded by Billy Mayer on March 18, 1975. This is the first video recorded in a place close to Hingwell, Switzerland, on a snowy afternoon. He had his camera fixed on a tripod. Let's look at some facts. Fact number one. It looks like a model hanging from a fishing rod. At this point, many people would ignore this case and consider it a fake demonstration. We can easily imagine at first sight Billy holding a fishing rod with a little UFO model at the end of a string line. We think that making this demonstration of a UFO that looks like a pendulum was done on purpose, allowing an escape exit for people not prepared to accept a new reality. Fact number two. Analyzing the movement in detail, we find this pendulum do not follow the laws of physics. The period of a pendulum, that is the time that it takes to complete one full cycle, depends on the length of the string of, or the cord. The shorter the length, the faster it moves. Measuring the period of the pendulum, we find it changes all the time. It means the length of the pendulum changes several meters. We have made several practical tests and we found we cannot replicate it. The skeptics have tried it, but the period of their pendulum movement does not change. It is fixed because the length of the cord they use does not change. We have not found yet anybody capable of replicating this video, holding a 15 meters long fishing rod with one hand pulling it and releasing the cord very fast, producing a small, smooth movement as the one that we see in Billy Mayer film. 
Fact number three, while making a tight turn, the UFO moves the treetop without touching it. This interaction demonstrates that the UFO and the tree are at the same distance from the camera. It is not possible to move a little tree with a small model without touching the tree. It is very clear this is a tree moved by a big flying disc. You can see that in this uh, portion of the film. See how the top of the trees move there. So we cannot explain that effect with a little model. Fact number four, checking the level of hue and saturation, we conclude that the UFO, the tree, and the house are far away from the camera. The dispersion of light creates an effect whereby distant object looks gray. Notice the bright color of the nearby grass here compared with the distant house and the tree and the UFO. They show the same subtones and it means the tree is big, real and close to the house, not close to the camera. This is not a little tree close to the camera. Fact number five, we find here three jumps of the chip in the demonstrations. It means in a fraction of a second, the UFO jumps a few meters ahead and here we see two of them. In the third one, the UFO stops immediately after the jump. The skeptics explain this as a cut on the film roll to simulate these jumps. We cannot confirm or deny this possibility because we do not have the original film. Maybe the original film is now destroyed after more than 40 years. A film like this after this time would be totally deteriorated or destroyed and Billy does not have the original role with him because it was stolen. The best evidence that we have now are the several copies that were made in electronic format. Fact number six, there is a distortion on the film that produces an arc on the movie, like this line. And this is not random distortion. It has a main arc with the smaller ones on top of it. We had found four distortions like this, always crossing the UFO image, even though it is in a different position. Here we see all of them indicating the time in the video when they were produced. The fourth one is the less intense, but is there. This is not a coincidence. There is a clear correlation between the UFO location and the distortions. Was the UFO producing some kind of pulses that last a tiny fraction of a second? We see this distortion in all the copies of the film. Fact number seven. There is evidence that there were electric charges inside the camera. We see the internal electric pulses in several places in the film. Is the UFO causing them? Fact number eight. The tree we see in the film did not exist in 1975. The house has small trees in 1975, but not a big one. Why do we see this big tree in the film if it didn't exist? Fact number nine, we find a tree with the exact shape, same height, same width, exactly at the same position here, but around 30 years later by 2003. How it is possible we see an identical tree that is in existence 30 years later?
Is this a coincidence? You may find a detailed analysis of the missing tree in a paper I have on my own web page. Let us look in detail at this finding. This is a recent aerial photo of the place where the demonstration took place. You see here the house, the main house, the location of the missing tree, and Billy was towards this direction, around 330 meters away. And this is the profile of the terrain. Billy was 30 meters lower than the house level. This is an aerial photo of 1972, three years before the demonstration. On the right hand, there is a zoom image. There are no big trees here, close to the house, and we know that we will not find a tall tree three years later. It's not possible that it grows so fast. This is 1978, three years after the demonstration. There are small trees growing here, but we know they are not tall yet by looking at the shadows, comparing them with the house shadows. 1984, the trees are bigger. We find a small tree in the place where we saw the big one in the film. Nineteen ninety six. The tree is growing. Look at the shadow and the tree here. Two thousand and three. There is a big tree in front of the house. The house here and the tree is a big tree. Here there is a detail of this tree in top view at the left and lateral view from an airplane showing here as a black and white photo on the right. This is the house, the house, the tree, the tree. Top view and from one side. 2006. There the tree was recently cut less than one year ago. We may find the brown grass or a lack of grass where it was before, here. Winter, spring, summer, they would have erased this brown mark. It was recently cut. We made calculation of the size of this tree in 2003 by looking at the aerial photos, the size of the house, the length of the shadows here. This is a top view and we rotated this image. You see the length of the shadow of the house, the shadow of the big tree that is here. It gives us an idea of the elevation of how tall the tree is in this photo. We conclude that the tree by 2005 was around 18 meters tall and 12 meters wide, exactly the same size and shape as the tree we see in Major Film. And it is located exactly at the same place. Is this a coincidence? If Major used a small tree as the skeptics claim, it means he located it in a manner that exactly matched the tree from the future. It's hard to believe that this is actually the case here. Or the owners of this farm watched Mayer's film and decided to grow a tree in the same place. The tree reached the same dimensions as Mayer's tree in the film. And then they cut it 30 years later without telling anybody. This possibility sounds totally absurd. As explained by the plagiarists, the ETs, same Yase in this case, use a technique of projecting a tree from one place to another, as she did in Fuswell Hofhalden 
in Switzerland. This is a projection of a tree and a spaceship from a nearby place. It means creating an hologram of a tree that is in another location. A few days later, after these demonstrations, Semyase disappeared or erased this tree. Now we have two missing trees. The Pleiadian explained that she did the same thing at Hingwell by projecting a tree in front of the house. We know the UFO and the tree are close to each other because they interact between them and we, as we see it in the film. So Simbiasi was in another place, in a forest located toward the west, and Billy recorded the hologram of the UFO and the tree in front of the house. Now the question is, why do we find this tree, at least a very similar one, at the same place 30 years later? Perhaps Sinyasi observed the future? She found a future tree and based on that she projected the hologram at the right place? We find in the documentary The Silent Revolution of Truth that Guido Musbrugger claimed he saw a demonstration of Sinjase disintegrating a big tree in front of him. The Pleiadian explained that they can transform every atom of the tree into pure energy, reversing the time. If they can do that, it is possible that Sinjase did that to the tree in the forest after the demonstration. He reversed its growth, transformed it into a seed and planted in the exact same place where she made the holographic projection. 30 years later, the tree grew again. Or Simbiasi made a holographic projection of a tree from a different location and also from a different time from the future. We find the facts of this film very intriguing. We know it is not a fake UFO of a tree from Billy Mayer. We find that the ETS technology allows them to do instant distance jumps in space, do an incredible tight turn, make a real distant projection of a tree, like a hologram, and probably reverse the time period of the evolution of a tree, or maybe travel in time. Every time we study this film, from several copies that exist, we find new fascinating details. Finally, I would like to say that most of the evidence in Billy Major case is very intriguing. Sometimes we find logical explanations. Other times we find fantastic explanation. I have been studying this case for more than 11 years. The most intriguing aspect of this case to me now is why, if this is the most extraordinary case with several scientific studies, thousands of photos, several videos, all of that demonstrating it is real. Why we are not seeing any documentaries about it on Netflix, the History Channel, Discovery Channel, Move On Investigations, etc. Why is there a video around it? Maybe this is a subject of another presentation. Thank you.